Hey guys, Michael from Kaka Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be covering what's the difference between a physical change versus a chemical change. So we'll start with the definitions of physical change and chemical change, indicating the differences, and then we'll take a look at some examples where we identify whether this change is going to be a physical or a chemical change. To start, a physical change is a process in which the chemical formula does not change. So uh, the, if you were to look at the reactant versus the product, the formulas are going to be the same. And these include phase changes such as melting, boiling, sublimation, so any strict phase changes, changes in size, changes in shape, as well as just any physical things that we can do to a compound. Chemical changes, on the other hand, these are processes or reactions that they involve a change in the chemical formula. So you were to look at the left hand, the react side versus the product side, you'll get, you have two different formulas, such as if we had, say like CH4 plus O2 forms CO2 plus H2O, that would be a chemical change. Could you see the reactants and products have different chemical formulas? So examples of some chemical changes of burning, combusting, which this is by the way, rusting, cooking, any cooking related tasks such as baking or or just cooking. Um, so those those are just some examples of chemical changes. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple examples where we have to determine if these are physical or chemical changes. The first one, crumbling a sheet of aluminum foil. That would just be, oh, I'll use P for physical and C for chemical. So this would just be a physical change because it's uh, still aluminum before and still aluminum after, but you just changed the, the visuals. Next one, souring of milk. So that would be a chemical change because um, a ke chemical reaction is actually happening and that's what's causing the milk to be, to be sour. Digesting of food, that would be another example of a chemical change. Melting of ice cube, that's just a phase change. So that's just, if we were to write out the reaction H2O solid becoming H2O liquid, but you can see that the formula is still the same, it's just a phase that changes. So when it's just a strict phase change, that is a physical change. Next one, bleaching of hair. Bleaching is a, a chemical process, so that'll be a, a chemical change. Cutting a bread, it's still bread before, still bread after, but just a different shape. So that would be a physical change. Baking a cake, as we talked about earlier, anything that's typically cooking related, it's going to be a chemical change. So baking a cake is a chemical change. And then lastly, evaporating alcohol. So when you're evaporating um, alcohol, so it's just going from alcohol that's a liquid to alcohol in the gas form. It's still alcohol before and after, but this is a phase change. So that will be an example of a physical change. Okay, that's it for physical versus chemical change. Hopefully you that made it more sense and you feel more confident with ex determining the differences as well as determining if something is a physical versus a chemical change. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.